All right, so it's the day after Christmas. We're working in the shop trying to get caught up on a lot of things before the new year new year hits. We want to finish out the old year first. So shop is closed during the week between Christmas and New Year's. And what are we doing? We got all this stuff to work on. We're going to work on a customer's car today. This is a Subaru 360 van. We're going to get a little technical. We did the front brakes last episode I believe and now we're gonna do the rear brakes and let's just kind of go through a few things for you who may not be familiar with how Subaru 360 brakes work uh, we're gonna get these things unstuck and usable and make them so that we have a functional car so as we look at the rear of a Subaru 360 van truck or sedan they all are essentially the same in the rear. They have the same shoes, the same wheel cylinder, the same sort of adjustment mechanism. Now we've peeled off the shoes already. You can see I've marked them left and right. So this would be the right side. The shoes go on just like that. I'm just gonna set them there for now. There are no hold downs, but the e-brake arm is crucial to be in the right spot. In other words, the the hook for the e-brake cable goes just like that. So the e-brake cable would run basically from this connection point right here on this arm. It has a ferrule that goes through the center of that kind of a claw. The cable rim runs through this hole and through uh, up through the body all the way to the front. Now you can pry off the whole uh, set of shoes as a set rear set what we're really looking for here is not the amount of meat on the shoes but we want to make sure that the aluminum backed backing plate hasn't come unbonded I've seen these where they look good but if you look close there might be a crack between the organic material or the friction material and the shoe I'm sorry and the backing and what will happen is you're driving along and this organic material or the friction material will slough off and it will wedge the wheel because it'll be caught in there and you'll be stuck. You cannot roll the vehicle. So we're going to clean these up. I think these are fine, but I'm just going to take a screwdriver and I'm going to pry a little bit on the edges here to see if I can get them to come unbonded. If they do look loose, we're just going to get them rebound, re, rebound, relined, whatever you call it. So this is the shoe set. Okay condition, just need to be cleaned up. We're going to move on to the star wheel adjuster. It's usually at the bottom. It always actually is at the bottom. It looks like a wheel cylinder. These star wheels typically get frozen. I have taken a pair of channel locks and you just clamp around them to loosen them and pull them out. They pop out like this. They can be greased up. You need to make sure that this part here is free. The, th the threads are clean, clear, and easily adjustable. So you can put these in a vise, heat them up, whatever it takes, get a little grease on, not too much grease. They need to move freely in the bore here and also with this little guy, the centerpiece. So we're gonna clean those up. Then we're gonna move on to the wheel cylinders. We'll pull back the dust boots. You can see these are in bad shape. These little extensions are not the are not the pistons, that's the piston right there and the piston is seized in the bore. So we'll take a pair of expanding pliers like um, piston ring pliers or some type of a pliers that expands outward and try to rotate that around, pull out the piston, see if we can clean it up and see if we can hone up that bore. Then we're gonna take and, and take a 3M pad, clean up the backing plate, paint it, rebuild the wheel cylinder, basically rebuild the adjustable star adjusters clean up the shoes put it back together we don't have e-brake cables yet those are on order but i think we're going to get the brakes working on this thing the best we can so i'm going to get a tool to pull this piston out and see what we got there so you want a pair of expansion pliers like this they're not real expensive ten dollars or something like that and what we're going to do is we're going to insert the tongs of the pliers into our piston and we're going to try to rotate it in other words twist it like this to see if we can break that free 
they're usually stuck. Oh, it's really stuck. All right, so we got to move on to phase two. We're going to have to heat this up a little bit. The piston is steel, and the aluminum wheel cylinder is aluminum. We've got two dissimilar metals, and they have bonded together. So we're going to get like a little map gas torch and see if we can just warm this up. We don't want to melt it or warp it in any way. Just get some heat on there. Just want to warm it up. We got rid of the dust seals, but there are rubber seals in there. We're going to replace those. But we got to get this wheel cylinder warmed up a little bit. See if we can expand it, loosen up those stuck pistons. It's kind of nice using a torch on a cold day like today. I don't know if I mentioned it's 28 degrees outside. So we're going to do this for a little while. Like we don't want to damage the wheel cylinder. We don't want to catch anything on fire. We're going to warm this up and use our pliers to see if we can pull out a piston. Okay, you can see we've got a little smoke going on here. We just used our MAP gas torch just a little bit to warm up these wheel cylinders. Now I've got a punch. I'm going to try to just see how I move that piston in a little bit. And same thing with the other side. Just got to get them loosened up. There. They're starting to move. Let's see if we can get our pliers. get one to pull out here. Yep, here we go. Oh. So we cooked the seals and the brake fluid. Hopefully we have some new seals. Uh, but that way we got the pistons out without doing any damage. We need to take those pistons over to the wire wheel. And focus on that. See if we can clean those up a bit. And we've got to hone out the bore. So once our wheel cylinder has cooled down, we take a little brake lube. This is brake fluid or assembly fluid and a hone on a drill. So a hone, wheel cylinder hone that's like this, a little two, uh, two stone hone. You want to lubricate the stones very well. But the one thing I forgot is that this wheel cylinder is 5 8 It's pretty small. I don't think I can get my hone in there. So we may have to resort to polishing the bore with basically taking a piece of 3M pad, ripping it down, inserting it on a arbor with your drill and just getting it kind of polishing out all the crud. You can see there's some crud in there. We gotta get all that out. However you... Okay, so you wanna take your 3M maroon pad like this, cut it into a strip or just rip it into a strip and just pull it back and forth inside your wheel cylinder and you will polish it out really nice and clean. See that? You can do the same if you cut a smaller strip and do the inside of your adjuster as well. You then want to take all your little steel parts over to your bench grinder or your wire wheel and put on your glasses so you don't get a piece of wire from the wheel into your eyeball and clean these all up. See how they're all cleaned up? I just spent a little time with my wire wheel and now we can start reassembling. All right, so once you get everything cleaned up and reassembled, you get your new seals in, you want to rotate them as you push them in on the pistons. You need to make sure that they're very fluid. In other words, that the pistons move easily in the cylinder. Same thing with your adjusters. They need to be able to move easily. Like you should be able to turn that easily. So we're gonna put the boots on, our dust covers and our outer pistons that engage with the brake shoes and score a little paint on our backing plate. Kind of tune that up a little bit, make it look good. And it should look something like this. When you're all done. Now let's put the shoes on. Okay, and then once you've got your shoe package on there with your e-brake levers in the right position. Now we don't have cables, so we can't adjust for them now. But what we're gonna do is we're gonna pop on the rear drum and we're gonna adjust them the best we can so we can bleed them. And when we get the e-brake cables at a later date, we will install them and probably readjust. So let's pop on our drum and make some adjustments.
Once you get your wheel on, it should look like this. But there's one tip I forgot. When looking at your drums on the inside, see how rusty those are? Especially right there. They're pretty gritty. You need to take a piece of 3M polished cloth, kind of buff those out a little bit. You can also use a wire wheel. It needs to be bright and shiny. Otherwise, you're going to transfer all this rust onto your shoes and you're going to have uneven braking and you're going to fight the adjustment. So give them a good wipe down, clean up. There's just a lot of, you can feel your finger, it's just kind of sticky. You've got to clean that all off before you put your drums on. Tip and trick for you. Okay, so next up we want to adjust the brake shoes so that our pedal has less play in it. In other words, the closer we can get the shoes to the drum surface, the easier it's going to be to bleed and the firmer our pedal is going to be. The really ingenious thing about Subaru 360 finned aluminum hubs, if you look in here, there's a little sight hole and there's also a sight hole here. This sight hole, as you spin it around, you can see the contact area, I don't know if you can see that, between the shoe and the drum. Can you see that in there? There's a little gap there. So that means that I can move that shoe closer to the drum by just visually looking at it. So then all I have to do is get this hole near where our adjuster is, which is down here. So if you get it down here, you get it on the, you're looking for the star wheel adjuster, which is right about, I don't know if I get the tit or not, right about there. And you can look at this and you can see how close your shoe is to the drum. It's actually pretty, pretty interesting and pretty amazing. Engineers think of everything. Okay, so you got your shoes all adjusted. I usually paint a little arrow to remind me as to which way the adjuster goes. But you look through the little hole there and you can, uh, that's your, your uh, adjuster hole. And then the, the peak hole for how close the shoe is to the drum is right there. And you can see if you're turning it the wrong way. It's a pretty ingenious little thing. If you're turning the wrong way, you can see the, the, the shoe go away from the drum. And if you're turning it the right way, right about there, you can see the star wheel adjuster is in, in sight. You can adjust that down and bring the shoe closer toward the drum. So we're gonna move on to bleeding the brakes. I'm a one-man bleeder, one-man shop. So our bleeder wrench is on the bleeder nipple. You need to make sure your nipples are clean so the fluid can flow through them. Fluid has to go up, up. So you hang your, your can on a doorknob or a window gutter or something high. You make sure that you've got plenty of fluid in your reservoir. This is our brake fluid reservoir right here. We gotta fill it, we just drained it down. So we'll do that. And then from underneath the car, it's really nice about being in a van, is you can grab the brake pedal from right here and I can watch see that tube back there I can watch as I'm pumping the pedal I can watch the fluid can you see it you probably can't see that go up the tube and how much air is in it there's a big air bubble I'm trying to work out right now so I'll keep pumping that but I don't want to uh, cause my reservoir to go dry off start all over again so we're gonna fill that up keep a bottle of brake fluid handy and just keep making sure this is full. There's a little bit in there. Okay, we're finishing up on our brake job on our Subaru 360. This is our brake pedal right here. We've got a nice firm pedal. And if I pull on this while spinning the wheel, let's see if I can do this. See how I got to come to a stop? The only thing I don't like, well, we don't have any leaks. We've got a pretty good pedal, but there's, too much play in this pin. Like when I move the brake pedal, that's too much. It needs to be about half that. So I have to get back in here and adjust that rod that goes to the, you know, the clevis rod to the, um, to the master. So we'll fix that and we should be good until our e-brakes come in. So thanks for watching. Hopefully I didn't uh, overwhelm you with too much technical advice on your Subaru 360. These things are cute little things, but the brakes are always the Achilles heel, and I hope that I 
maybe smoothed out somebody's day. Let me know in the comments if I did. Let me know if I helped you out. All right, we'll see you later. Catch you on the next one.